It's evening time here on the homestead and we're tasting apples, um, late summer apples. It's August 20th-ish, something like that. This is Kerry Pippin. This apple has a couple distinctive features that can help you identify it, but they aren't on all apples, but they're common enough that you'll see them. One is these fleshy protuberances uh, kind of sticking out. Sometimes they'll be attached to the stem or really hug the stem. Uh, this one's not very classic. And the other one is like a thin ridge that's actually a raised, physically raised uh, ridge that's sharp. And there'll be one, two, three of them sometimes. Uh, and they're not always there either, but they are fairly distinctive. Other apples do have that, but it's not very common. The tree is uh, pretty spur bearing. It, it usually forms a lot of spurs and it can set pretty heavily. It seems like a fairly reliable cropper. Disease doesn't seem too bad. There's some scab on this one, but I didn't see a lot of scab on this this year. And I think in general, it's just not super scabby. Other diseases, I don't really know. We have a lot of trouble here with drops and they'll start doing that before they're even ripe. So they ripen unevenly and they tend to drop off the tree pretty easily. So that's kind of a negative and I imagine that that's true everywhere. Flavor wise, um, it can be pretty rich, especially for an early-ish apple. Here it just never quite makes the cut. I will probably graph this over unless this or one other apple here is just really amazing. It's okay, but it just isn't good enough. I could graft this tree to chestnut crab next year, and within two or three years, I could have a tree full of chestnut crab apples, and I would much prefer that. So I'll probably do that. But let's go ahead and taste this. Wow, a little pruning there. Get that thing out of my face. This is probably the best uh, specimen I've ever had. The flesh is uh, yellowish colored. There's a distinct anise flavor, which has gotten stronger and stronger over the season. It is a tart apple. Yeah, I mean, it still has a, a good bite to it. So don't expect the sweet apple. The sugar is not particularly high. I wouldn't say it's a balanced eating apple. It's definitely an acidic apple. It tastes like it might be a good sauce apple, actually. I would probably end up adding some sugar. I could see it being a good pie apple, too, actually. It's, it's quite flavorful. Let's try uh, some specimens that look a little bit riper, even. Mm, right. Yeah, so this one trumps that one, and it's less acidic. My guess is that if they ripened in less heat than we have here over a longer period of time, they might be a little bit mellower tasting anyway. It won't be long until the texture on this is no good, you know, for most people. I, I mean, I don't mind apples being a little bit soft, but some people just cannot abide it. Now this one looks even riper to me. It's got more of a translucent look to it. So what we have here is three stages of ripeness that are a great example because they're all edible, but they are different. Uh, this one is still pretty sharp. It's a little on the sharp side for a dessert apple to me. And this one is about right, I would say, but the texture is definitely not as crunchy and crispy as this one. But this one is definitely, there's really no crisp left to it. It's not mealy yet, but it's, you know, it's going to be there pretty soon. So if I were doing anything like sauce, I would definitely pick them more like this on the riper side. But I think the window on these apples is just really, really narrow and that it's just always going to be that way. I have another branch of this on another tree, so I probably am going to graft this over to something like chestnut crab or, or who knows what. Yeah, that's how it is here. I think it's an apple that's worth a try. The anise flavor, especially this year, is quite strong. It's a very aromatic apple. My guess is that in some place like Oregon or, you know, Western Oregon, Western Washington, you know, the British Isles, obviously, um, it might be a little bit better. All right, let's go see what else we can find. This is a sort of an early apple Franken tree. I have, uh, it's mostly early apples. I have a few other apples on here. So there's a couple things ripe. This is an apple called um, Salem June. Here, you know, it's late August and it's just ripening. This might be overripe. It polishes up super nice. So again, uh, not very sweet at all, very, very acidic, uh, more like a cooking pie 
uh, sauce with sugar added. Pretty unexciting. This has been very unexciting. Almost no interesting flavors at all. Uh, let's see what else is on here. There we go. Now this could be very interesting, except it's probably way overripe. But there are some interesting things about this apple. So this apple is called Viking, and it was bred in the north, uh, one of these university programs. I think it was the PRI program. And the interesting thing about it, there's several interesting things about it. One is that it was part of a scab resistance breeding program. So they were breeding for scab resistance. But this is the only apple out of the whole program, you know, thousands, you know, tens of thousands of seedlings or more that they chose even though it's scab susceptible. So that tells you something right there. You know, they go through all this trouble to find this one thing and then they're just like, whoa, we better name this one too. <laughs> the other interesting thing about it is that it has red flesh. Uh, there's red staining all along the inside here. And I think the one that I had before, uh, or a couple of them, had actually more than this. But it has some, and that's encouraging in terms of using this for breeding, mixing with other red fleshed apples because it has that trait. Now I know one of the parents of this is Rome Beauty, and it does that as well. Tasting this right off, I would have guessed that it was related to Gravenstein. It has a similar aromatic flavor. The flavor is intense. I don't really know what to describe it as, but it reminds me of something I ate as a kid, like a fruit juice drink or... Man. I get these flavors in apples a lot that I associate with artificial fruit candy flavors, like watermelon, hard watermelon candy and stuff like that. And I think that's what I'm tasting here, is uh, something at least very similar to that watermelon, that fake watermelon, you know, hard candy flavor. I wouldn't call it a balanced eating experience. It's uh, quite acidic again, although I'd say it's a little more balanced and sugary than that, but maybe not quite as much as Kerry Pippin. The flavor is not, um, it doesn't have a, a rich, deep depth to it. It just has this really sensational, really upfront, uh, strong fruit flavor. Very interesting apple. I think in terms of breeding, this could be really cool because, you know, it has a unique and strong flavor. It has red flesh, so for red flesh breeding, you know, that's a bonus. And it probably, I don't know how that works, but it probably carries scab resistance in there somewhere. This is a really intriguing apple. I wish I had a bigger branch of it. All right, so let's move on to an even earlier apple, William's Pride, which is related to Viking. And you can see this specimen is quite large, very dark red. And this is a really good apple. I've had just endless trouble with birds on this apple. They just, they're just on it so early, you know. Not only is it early, but it's really red and it's really big. So between those things, the birds are just like, thank you very much. Mm. Quality and flavor wise, this is very different. It's much sweeter. You know, it's not this like early acidic apple, classic, you know, thing that we get a lot. Now I'm pretty sure that specimen's been in the fridge for over two weeks and it's still pretty good. Let's try a different one. The flavor is kind of gone though. The flavor of this apple I would say is like eating cider or like eating apple juice. This is a little more that way, but really these have kind of lost their flavor in storage. But that's how I would characterize that apple. It's real, real cidery, very sweet. Biggest problems are birds. Just good luck getting them past the birds. I had a pretty decent amount on two different, you know, branches and I, I just hardly got anything off of them that actually made it to the right stage. Uh, that apple doesn't have it much this year, but it also has a tendency towards a red flush. So again, I've been using that in breeding because of that trait and it's uh, scab resistance, earliness and general high quality. Let's see what else is on here. Gravenstein, I probably shouldn't have picked that because it probably isn't ripe yet. It's an early apple, but here it's probably more like really late August to early September. It's not ripe yet. Okay, Summerfield. I don't know if this is actually supposed to be a summer apple. I don't know anything about it. That's interesting. 
uh, kind of a sugarcane flavor. Mild flavors, but pleasant. Really nice, crunchy, modern apple texture and a uh, decent amount of sugar, even though it's not ripe yet. It's very scabby though. I don't really know anything about that apple, but I guess I know something now. All right, here's a little crab called uh, Small Wonder. I've never eaten this before, but we're gonna find out. Uh, that's not ripe yet, but it tastes kind of promising. It's definitely got some tannin going, but it tastes like the sugar is actually gonna develop. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a cider apple, but again, I just don't know anything about it. Sunrise is gonna be good on this tree. Skinner seedling is not ready yet. Tideman's Red is not ready yet. So let's cruise over to another tree and taste chestnut crab and see if there's anything else. Okay, let's take a look at chestnut crab. Look at that beauty. I think this is just a beautiful apple. It, um, it'll often have more russeting. This year it's real clean looking. Now I'm gonna guess that some of these aren't really at their best yet, but that they'll be very good. And I uh, certainly like the looks of this one. Not exactly falling off the tree here. Also, uh, some of these are quite large. They're usually not this large. Hands down the sweetest today, like by a long shot. This isn't the richest chestnut crab I've ever eaten. It's definitely ripe. It's very good though, and there's the richness of it is like, it has a thickness to it. I don't know how to describe it. Real mild flavors, but uh, yeah, it's really good. I mean, out of everything I've tasted today, the Williams Pride at their peak and this, again, and, and I've said this before, those are the apples of the season that I found so far. Uh, so I think this would be a great cider apple because of the sugar. You know, great for apple butter, apple juice, apple sauce, I don't know. I'm sure it would be very good in a pie. And, uh, you know, just all the flavors kind of just work. Like Kerry Pippin has this really strong anise flavor, but then it's got this acid that's fighting with that. And the sugar's not quite there, and it's not like... It's not a harmonious eating experience. Uh, Williams Pride is much more of a harmonious eating experience. This is a harmonious eating experience where everything just kind of, it just all comes together and kind of works. Viking, um, just like in your face fruit flavor, but then it's got all this, this similar to Kerry Pippin, it's got all this acidity going on on the side and not very much sugar to balance it out. I have had ones that have a lot richer, more interesting flavor than this, but there's certainly nothing at all wrong with this. It's just more like eating sugar cane or something like that. And as usual, one of my main criteria for a good apple is I don't want to, I want to keep eating it. Like most of the other apples, I'm like, eat a little bit, throw it on the ground. But this one, I just want to eat it all. So especially with my big Franken tree taking the year off, that's it for apples right now. Um, there just isn't much going on. But I do have this Haogen melon, or Haogen, H-A-O-G-E-N. And I just posted about this on Instagram. So this is a uh, small melon. It can get up to the size of like a small or medium cantaloupe sometimes, but it tends to be pretty small. And I'm gonna save these seeds. Yeah, whatever. No place to put them. The flesh is uh, green, tending towards white and yellow, but it has a green cast to it. Let's just taste it. Super sweet. Very nice flavor. Maybe tending towards a honeydew type of flavor, but I'm no melon expert. One cool thing about it is it'll produce fruit into the fall. Uh, Mark Albert down in the valley says it'll produce for him into October. I definitely have like a second uh, wave of fruits on the plant that haven't swollen up and ripened yet and it's still just late August. So if I have all of September to ripen those melons too, yeah, I can get like a kind of either continuous bearing or a second crop late. So it's pretty cool and it's uh, tolerated all kinds of torture, you know, lack of water, uh, stunting and everything. And it always seems to, you know, come out and produce a few small melons anyway. 
and it's quite tasty. That's about it for uh, this tasting session and hopefully as the season goes on we can taste a few more apples at uh, different times. I like doing these videos and I know some people really like them so I'll do what I can to keep making them. The uh, importance of cultivar selection can't be really stressed enough, you know. At some point I guess I had about 250 varieties of apples grafted here and the average of those is just not really that great, you know. And once you get your you know, the bar set by something like chestnut crab, you know, then everything's different. Spend some time thinking about and planning cultivars. The cool thing about apples is that you can regraft. This was grafted twice over to different things, and now it's an early Franken apple, so it has, you know, five different varieties of early apples on it. Get out of my, get out of my apples. It comes mine. Uh, cultivar selection is just super important. I've trialed uh, carrots quite a bit, beets, uh, leeks, pepperoncini, uh, I don't know what else. You know, I've tried a lot of different stuff and eventually you start to find stuff that does well in your area. It might suit, you know, your gardening style better. It might suit uh, your taste better. If you don't select cultivars at all, and just kind of grab whatever's at the local market, you're not going to get as much uh, reward out of your gardening efforts as if you do. And once you find good cultivars, you can start saving seed and uh, keep up with the same stuff that you know works. And then from there, you have a benchmark if you want to do further testing or if you want to do some breeding or anything like that. You have this, like, you know, benchmark to compare things to. All right, good night. So we'll just uh, take our melon seeds here and soak them in a little bit of water for maybe a couple of days. They'll start to ferment and then they'll let go of this pulp a lot easier and separate out and wash out real easy. You don't have to do that. You can just kind of flop them out or separate them with your fingers, but it is a lot easier.